Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at some testing of the laser scrambling capabilities of the Rocky Mountain Radar Judge. Uh, this is Rocky Mountain Radar's newest, latest, and greatest radar detector, and it offers both radar and laser scrambling capabilities. Now, scrambling is kind of something that Rocky Mountain Radar offers that doesn't actually work at all, it's completely bogus, and the idea is a lot like a radar or laser jammer, they can scramble a police officer's radar gun or laser gun and prevent them from being able to get your speed. Now, I don't want you to like, what I'm about to share with you, it's kind of just some techno babble that's not true at all, it's just really designed to confuse people and sound intelligent. Um, but the way that it's supposed to work, the theory behind it is if you take a look uh, over here, you can actually see there's three little glowing LEDs, right? Um, they look red to the human eye on camera. They look kind of pinkish or purple. The idea is uh, this guy is going to be constantly transmitting laser pulses uh, that are going to be confusing any laser gun that's shot at it. So whether it's detecting laser or not, these are constantly transmitting, um, which is going to be very important because when, you, when we get to the testing videos, as you'll see, it's not always going to be able to detect the laser gun, but it is always going to be transmitting at least in theory now the way that it works is it's constantly transmitting pulses and as long as you're more than 100 feet away from the detector this is going to be able to prevent the gun from getting a speed it's sending out one pulse every 100 feet it says so light starts traveling travels 100 feet and then it transmits another pulse and another pulse and another pulse knowing the speed of light that means this guy's having to operate at about 9.8 megahertz it's sending out 9.8 million pulses per second. Now, that's a little absurd. For those of you guys who remember the LE-10, which operated at two megahertz, this guy would have to operate at 10. The LE-10, which operated at just two, transmitted so much light that it was not eye safe. They never even bothered sending it out for FDA approval. Uh, if you put your hand in front of it, it would actually get hot and they would shut it off after five seconds of operation to prevent it from, to shorten, to, uh, extend its lifespan let's put it that way <laughs> now that was operating at two megahertz this guy operates at 10. there's no specs on how much light it operates per pulse but they're saying it's uh, six to ten times the amount of light necessary for this guy to detect it so it's an absurd amount of light if you actually start running the numbers behind it it doesn't make any sense which makes sense because it's absurd. This isn't, it doesn't make sense, it's baloney, right? If you wanna see more, I've actually taken the detectors apart, put them on the scope and gone into a lot more detail about uh, this stuff. If you wanna see that, watch this video up here. Um, but in this video, I wanna go more to the test results now that you understand the theory behind what it's doing. The idea is it's constantly transmitting pulses. Now, the reason that 100 foot mark is important is because if you're a hundred feet or closer um, it's saying that it's not going to be able to scramble the lidar and they're going to get a speed depending on where you look sometimes it says it's 125 feet in other areas they say there is no punch through zone and you can scramble no matter what the distance is but What's important is it operates better at a distance. So for that reason, uh, I found a test course. It was 750 feet long from start to finish. And so we're gonna start uh, you know, basically driving towards the LiDAR gun and uh, seeing what this guy's capable of. So first, uh, I just wanna go ahead and show you me shooting the gun. This is the easiest way to do it, is just to do it like this and use it as it's intended to be shot. And then I wanna show you on camera. Uh, but first, what we're gonna do is uh, we're going to go ahead and put this guy up on the windshield. We're going to turn the detector off so no scrambling functionality is active to kind of set a baseline, a control, right? Uh, see what it takes to actually be able to lock in a speed and how long it takes for me to get that speed. All right, so this is with the detector shut off. So as you can see, uh, it was instantaneous, right? As soon as I pulled the trigger, boom, I was able to get a speed. Now we're gonna go ahead and repeat that test. This time we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn on the detector. We're gonna go ahead and make sure the scrambling functionality is turned on, like it makes a difference. And then we're gonna go ahead and repeat that test. And again, you're gonna see instant punch throughs. As soon as I pull the trigger, boom, I'm able to acquire the speed, even at a distance. IPT, 20, 21, 21. Okay. Cool, so now I don't want you to just take my word for it. I wanna go ahead and show you what this looks like from the perspective of the person shooting the gun. Now, to get this on camera, it is a little bit tricky to you know take a, uh, a camera like this 
and line it up and hold it straight and get everything aligned. And so um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you that. And I also want you to notice that there's times when uh, I'm locked onto the car and I'm able to get a speed. And then there's other times where I kind of uh, maybe drift off a little bit and you'll notice I can't get the speed anymore. It's a little bit tough to see because of the lighting and the camera and whatnot, but you'll actually see there's a difference. And so I want you to notice uh, when I'm actually locked into the car, you'll see it, you'll hear it, and you'll see the speed pop up. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like from the uh, police officer's perspective uh, when they are using a LiDAR gun and somebody has a Rocky Mountain radar with scrambling turned on and what it looks like from their perspective. So as you can see, as long as I got the gun locked onto the car, whether this guy is detecting or not, whether the thing is freaking on or not, I mean, really, I'm able to get the car's speed. Uh, whether we want to go over the theory, which makes no sense, or actually take a look at the real world test results, which show you that this guy does not work. If you're looking for something that can prevent a police officer from getting your speed with a laser gun, this is not the way to do it. Now, there are products that can do that. Uh, laser jammers, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, those do work, they operate differently uh, for many reasons because they actually work. If you're wanting more information about laser jammers, click this button up here and I go over the different top options that are available. Um, but in short, when it comes to laser scrambling, uh-uh, doesn't work here on this guy. Not a surprise from everything we know about Rocky Mountain Radar, but it's good to uh, do the test nonetheless and show you guys. So speaking of testing, if you guys wanna see more testing, uh, click any of the buttons here on screen or links down in the video description and you'll get to see more tests here from the Rocky Mountain Radar judge.